Hey everyone, we should be past the ad break. Um, my name is Clayton and this is the Fantasy Football Talk Show for Friday. Um, it's going to be kind of a quick show. I'm also a little late, but uh, the reason it's going to be quick is I'm, again, kind of in the process of getting stuff together to be out. <laughs> but um, it's been a rather eventful fantasy week already. Uh, we talk briefly, we didn't talk much about the Thursday night game, but the Thursday night game was the Bengals thoroughly handling the uh, Browns. Really, the Browns didn't have much in terms of offense, unless you had Duke Johnson. He did fairly okay. Um, everyone else was kind of a train wreck. Uh, even uh, Barnage, who's been a pretty reliable tight end so far this season, uh, didn't have a very good game. So, you're if you started in Browns like I did, you're kind of, you know, scrambling, probably down a little bit. Uh, but what we do on the Friday show is first go through injuries, injury updates, and that kind of helps us flame out matchups, some things that you might need to think about, people to add, potentially, who have fantasy value uh, late in the game. So we're going to quickly go through that and then quickly go through the schedule and probably be out of here by 8 o'clock. Uh, but Tyra Taylor's back. Um, Sammy Watkins probably is going to be out again. Uh, he was held out of Friday practice, so I wouldn't expect him to play. Um, which makes Robert Woods a good add for this week if you need a wide receiver. Um, I mean, the matchup isn't the best matchup in the world, um, but Miami hasn't been... This is my. Yeah, Miami hasn't been. I'll just look at the schedule. Yeah, Miami hasn't been insanely good to stop. Uh, insanely good. Also, Cameron Wake is out, so there's a little bit less rush. So I, I mean, I would, I would consider Robert Woods. Matt Forte is out. Uh, he did not practice. He doesn't have a designation, but he's out. He's going to be out for a couple weeks. Des Bryant's playing. Sanders is playing. Payne's playing. Ronnie Hillman. Um, his questionable status, uh, he was limited at practice, so probably be fine. Um, but all that means is maybe the split between him and C.J. Anderson will be more in Anderson's favor. Kendall Wright's out. Um, Andre Johnson is playing. T.Y. Hilton is questionable, but is probably out. He was seen in a walking boot for most of the week. And the Colts have their bye next week, so it doesn't make sense to rush him out there for a tough game at Denver that they're probably not going to be able to win. Um, I would say T.Y. Hilton's going to be a sit, and even if he wasn't a sit, he's not a start this week. Uh, they're just, the Colts have just struggled too much on offense um, for you to start him this week. Because, um, I mean, Denver... Oh, it's at home, so it's at, in Indianapolis. I mean, it's still, still rough. It's still going to be a rough game. Um, and Denver is... Yeah, and Denver came over that off of that big win when in at home against Green Bay. So I would just avoid avoid your Colts. Uh, Andrew Luck's gonna play, but even he's not a good matchup. The the Broncos have been so good on defense this season. It's just hard to start anybody against them. They're like the Seahawks a couple of years, you know, for the previous couple of years. It's just not a team you want to start anybody against. Uh, Diggs is good to go, Edelman's good to go, Deion Lewis is good to go, Sneed, Cruz is out, but that's not a big news, Donald's out, we pretty much knew that after he injured his neck in the last game. Uh, Randall is questionable, uh, I would say he probably is play. he's had this questionable designation with the hamstring issue for a couple weeks now, uh, he'll probably gut it out, he's a mid-tier start, um, Tampa Bay is not a good defense, but not a bad defense either, they're a better defense than you probably think. Um, 
but I would I would say, you know, unless it's Odell Beckham, there's really no reason that you should be unless Odell Beckham's out, there's really no reason you should be reaching to Randall. Um, Decker is playing even though he hasn't practiced this week. Marshall is questionable even though he has practiced this week. Um, I guess Brandon Marshall starts. I have him actually in uh, in this league and. I actually made some trades this week. I got Des Bryant in a trade, and I also got Stephon Diggs in a trade um, in, for Justin Forsett and Darren McFadden, respectively. Um, I'm pretty. I was six running backs deep after getting D'Angelo Williams. Uh, so, and I have West. I also have um, Doug Martin, who's a top three back right now. And Eddie Lacy, who I think will get it going towards the end of the season once he's a little bit healthier. Um, but even if he doesn't, I've got you know the pe- people to sub in for him. And my league only allows me to start three running backs. There's only one running back slot, and then there's two flex spots. So at most, I can start three. I've got four that are all viable. Uh, and now I've got three very good wide receivers in Marshall, Dez, and... Stephon Diggs. So I, I feel like I've definitely upped my overall team chemistry and made myself a stronger team in that regard. Um, so I'm hoping that that will, you know, propel me. I, I, I've been on a very good winning streak, but I'll pro- I might lose this week, unfortunately. I just, I had to start people based on not knowing if these trades were going to go through. I wouldn't have started Diggs probably this week, because Diggs has a bad matchup. Uh, they're going against uh, Seattle this week, um, so I probably wouldn't have started Diggs. But other than that, I mean, there's uh, probably would start Dez over Travis Benjamin. You know, they're they're because of Menzel, but there's some things I would have done differently or would have held out. And, but I at, now have somebody to replace Brandon Marshall with if he's out. So there's that, and I might be able to take it because it's not a. It's not a bad matchup for me in terms of who I'm going against. It's just that they have a couple huge boom players, um, and I have some who don't have as great of matchups. Uh, but we'll see. Um, the rest of this is, you know, play, play, play. Uh, Ryan Matthews is questionable. I mean, Carlos Hyde's out. Vincent Jackson's out. Um uh, Jenkins is questionable, but logged to full practice, so he's probably good to go. Deshaun Jackson's questionable, um, but he intends to suit up this week, so that would be his first start since week one. Um, Green is out, Gates is in, and all your Steelers are good. Brian and Heath Miller. So Ryan Matthews is the only one I wasn't, I didn't know of, uh, but he practiced fully on Friday, so he's probably good to go. So again. We have so many season-ending injuries, but very few, you know, week-by-week injuries. So there aren't really too many people other than some people who might be um, waiver wire candidates who got recently picked up or recently dropped um, who are available. Um, But, yeah, that kind of goes through the injury report, and really there's not much to talk about there. Um, I'm going to go through one thing, though, uh, and it doesn't really necessarily have to do with injuries. But because of injuries, what happened is I ended up with uh, Carcandrick West, Darren McFadden, Justin Forsett, Eddie Lacy I drafted, D'Angelo Williams I picked up, oh, I also drafted Justin Forsett, and Doug Martin. So of those backs, I've traded away McFadden and Forsett, who I viewed as the two weakest of my six. (laughs) Um, The reason I traded these two away... For set is mainly because they're without Steve Smith they don't have a, the deep ball threat. Um, I mean, there's they've got they've got Aiken, but they don't have you know wide receiver who really scares a defense. And for sets had good games like against Pittsburgh and Cleveland, but against you know even decent opponents like San Diego, this is the game Steve Smith went out. That's his stat line against good teams like Arizona. That's his stat line. I mean, the touchdown really saved the day. Uh, so when you're looking at having games against Seattle, Kansas City, um, Miami, who's got a good front, St. Uh, St. Louis. I mean, he's got a couple of good games like Jacksonville. I mean, you could, Cleveland's a good game, as we saw. 
um, Pittsburgh at the end of the season. But he, he just doesn't have, you know, the great matchups that are there. Um, so, uh, I just, I, 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 Darren McFadden, I think, is actually the stronger of the two. And to me, Darren McFadden has got the Jets in the playoffs. He's got Green Bay. He's got Buffalo. I mean, his playoff matchups are not good. Um, and then you have Washington, who's a tough matchup. Carolina, who's a tough matchup. And all these games are going to be when Romo and Dez are back. So there's actually going to be... He's not going to be getting 30 carries a game like he has been, you know, recently. And this is what he did with, you know, a 24-carry load. You know, a decent game, but nothing to write home about. 64 rushing yards. It really came on these back-out-of-the-backfield yards, which I think are going to dry up once... Dez is fully healthy, and Tony Romo is there, because I don't think you're going to be checking down to Darren McFadden all that much. Also, you have the injury risk that McFadden poses. McFadden is already, right now, in the 120 carry range for the season. He hasn't broken two... He broke 200 carries last season, but before that, it had been four or five seasons, going back to his second year in the league, that he broke 200 carries. He's just not durable. Um, and as good as the Dallas line is, that's what you're betting on with McFadden. You're betting on the resiliency of the Dallas line. McFadden, I, I, I know you're not supposed to play, a, or not supposed to view a player through the spectrum of him, him getting injured, but McFadden's injury history is so great that when I compare him to a Des Bryant or a Stephon Diggs, um, two impact players, um, I've got to go with the upside of them rather than the upside of McFadden. Plus of my weakness at the wide receiver position, that now that I have, now my wide receiver position went from a position of weakness to strength, because now I have Marshall, Des Bryant, and... Stefan Diggs. Those are really, really great. I, I love Stefan Diggs. I love that he's the number one. I love Dez, mainly because Romo's coming back in a couple weeks. And even still, he'll be heavily targeted by Castle until Romo comes back. And Romo only adds to his value. So those are both stretch run plays. Um, Diggs has two amazing matchups in the playoffs, like this the semifinal and final game, if I get there. And that is against, um, I want to say it's Tampa Bay and the Giants. I'm, I know it's the Giants as his last game, but uh, who's the other game? Chicago, I'm sorry. Chicago, even better. Uh, Chicago and the Giants. So he's got, you know, Seattle and Arizona, which are tough matchups. Probably wouldn't play him in the Arizona Thursday nighter, but um, definitely against Atlanta, definitely against Green Bay, against Oakland. Uh, not going to play him this week probably because of the matchup in St. Louis. But, I mean, he's just, he just presents such a good upside. And since he's gotten into the lineup, he has refused to go home. Like, these are, 87 was, you know, getting his start. And that was against Denver. So, I mean, it's hard to sit him. Because even against tough teams, tough matchups like Denver, he's got 87 receiving yards. So, when I say he, I might not start him against St. Louis, it all depends. Um, I trust Teddy Bridgewater with him more because Bridgewater and him have chemistry rather than Castle and Dez, who, even though Dez, I would say, is the more talented receiver, I just really like what Stefan Diggs brings. So I, I made those trades, and I feel good about both of them. Uh, I was surprised I was able to make both of them for so little. Uh, I've been trying to ship for set out for you know practically the entire season, um, and I've just had no bites. And I've been you know I I was packaging it with other players, packaging with two team deals, um, like uh, for set and winning for one wide receiver, but I just wasn't getting anything. But now um, because everybody's so ru running back depleted, I was able to get him and. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm in a really good position going down the stretch run. Um, even if I do lose this week, I feel like going forward, I got. I think I can finish eight and five, which would be good enough for the playoffs. Um, and at worst, seven and six, which still probably gets me in. Um, 
and and because I th I think the sixth place, the seventh place, which is outside of the playoffs right now, is three and four. So they would have to go four and four and one. Yeah, they would have to go four and one to get to eight and five. Um, and I think there's if we I can look at the league real quick. You know, we have a bunch of three and five teams though. So one of these teams, I've beaten them. I'm playing them this week. I've beaten them. I lost to them. So uh, the out of the three and five teams, I have a better record than. Well, I have I have head to head wins over one two. I have a head to head win over the four and four. So I have head to head wins over two. I have a loss to this one. And if I lose this week, I'll have a loss here. Um, but still, at, even if I lose this week, I'll stay in the fifth place position. But I think I can get up um, with my with the last one, two, three. There's four games left in the season plus this week. So I'm trying to go three and two in my last four games um, because in the last five games because if, uh, even if this wins five out of the last five games, one of these teams would have to win. To, to knock me out of the where I am, one of these teams would have to win all five, and I go three and two. Um, and then I might still own the head to head. So I feel really, really good in my position with five weeks left, including this week. Five weeks left. I need to win three games to guarantee playoffs. Two games may get me in, depending on matchups, uh, but I think I can get three. I think I can get three. So uh, we're looking good. And, th and that all could change, but we're looking good. Um, so before we go, I'm just going to quickly breeze through the schedule like I often do. Uh, Dolphins Bills, interesting game to me just because I want to see how the Bills offense, uh, defense rebounds and what Tyrod Taylor can do now that he's been off the injury bug. I still have him on a couple of teams uh, as my backup quarterback, and I really like him. He provides a lot of spark. Even when he doesn't have a good passing day, he'll do stuff with his legs to get you the fantasy points that you need. Um, Green Bay Panthers, that's a matchup uh, that's going to be pretty interesting. I don't think there's much fantasy value there um, because the Panthers' defense is so good. Um, and that's really where you would start. I mean, Cam versus Green Bay is another interesting matchup. But I think the Packers, the way they play defense, the linebackers that they have, don't give Cam the running lanes that he would really need to have a huge fantasy day. So again, I think it's a low, it's a good game, but not a, a low-level fantasy game. The Jets Jaguars, however, if the Jets players are healthy enough, they could you know get a lot of points there. The Jaguars, I just don't see them doing much against the Jets on the defense. Um, Vikings Rams, again, Rams have a very good defense, but the Vikings have Adrian Peterson, so you you know that. And Stefan Diggs is healthy enough to go this game. So I'm probably going to actually, if, if I had to choose a 1 o'clock, um, that wasn't the Giants. Oh, no, the Giants played four. Uh, I would probably pick the Rams-Vikings game just because I want to see that matchup. I think the Patriots smashed the Redskins. Uh, the Redskins secondary is just not very good. Um, so the Patriots have, you know, that going for them. It's probably a LeGarrette Blunt game, though. Um, just because of how the Redskins line up, um, rather than a Deion Lewis out of the back. Oh, it could be a Deion Lewis out of the back for the game, because I could see this one getting out of hand. Saints-Titans, i got to give the edge to the Saints, especially after the, how they played to the Giants. I think Drew Brees um, is probably not going to regress much. Um, only thing is Mariota might be back, so or I think he is back. Mariota will be back, so we've got that. Um, Titans might be able to control the ball a little bit better, maybe keep the score down. Uh... But really, it's going to be yeah, how does Breeze follow up seven touchdowns? Um, Raiders Steelers. Raiders are better than people give them credit for. Um, Steelers are probably worse than people think. Um, but Ben Roethlisberger is back. The Raiders have a good secondary. Charles Woodson had, leads the league in interceptions, or is tied in the league, for the league lead in interceptions. And uh, but Roethlisberger. 
probably is going to have a good game. I see that. He, I want to see what he does with Bryant, uh, Martavius Bryant, in this game, and how he gets back to working in Antonio Brown consistently. Heath Miller could have a good game, too, because the Raiders' linebacking core is more pressure-oriented than coverage-oriented. So you, you also have that. Giants Buccaneers, um, the Bucks have a better defense than the Giants. The Giants are really injured right now. Um, so Doug Martin, probably a good start. Um, Jenkins could be a good start. Um, Mike Evans, I wouldn't be so sure of just because Chrome, uh, Cromartie is there. Dominique Rogers, Cromartie is still there. Um, and that's the one, you know, good secondary piece that the Giants have. Um, so I would say that I would, I would look for a lot of Martin. A lot of Martin on the ground um, for the Bucks. For the Giants, Odell. Just a ton of Odell Beckham. Some Shane Vereen, too. I wouldn't be surprised if Shane Vereen had a good game. Um, just because the Bucks kind of struggle in matchup coverage. Uh, and when you have Shane Vereen coming out of the backfield, I think they haven't utilized him enough in recent weeks. Getting back to Shane Vereen, I think, is a way for the Giants to get back on the winning way. Um... Falcons, 49ers, Devontae Freeman could have a stupid game. Um, get, um, they benched Kaepernick for Blaine Gabbert. Falcons are a good defense to start this week, especially with Kyler Earls Hyde also out. Reggie Bush is done for the season. He, nobody knows who, who's playing offense for the, the 49ers. Also, Vernon Davis is gone. Actually, that makes me think. Who owns the Falcons' defense? Yeah. Falcons' defense. Uh, yeah, Falcons' defense is going to have a good game this week. Good game this week. Um, what else do we have? Broncos' Colts. Um, like I said, Broncos' defense is very good. The Colts have been struggling on offense. Um, not a good game for Frank Gore. T.Y. Hilton is most likely out, which means Andre Johnson is kind of their sole big-time receiver with Kobe Fleener. Um, it's just hard, hard to see a good game for Andrew Luck in those circumstances. Um, so, I, I mean, Broncos really got to see if Peyton can keep up the, the volume that he threw. Because um, he threw for 340 yards, even though he had a pick. And he threw for 340 yards, which is much more than he has been. Uh, that's about a hundred more yards than what he's been, what he been, what he had been averaging. So, I would definitely look at that and see if you, you know, if you have Broncos players, that might be the, the turnaround point for Demarius Thomas, your Emmanuel Sanders, those kind of players. Um, also, I would say CJ CJ Anderson, just because of Ronnie Hillman's injury, probably gets more of the split and has another resurgent game. Uh, Cowboys Eagles, uh, Eagles defense up front is very good, but the Cowboys front seven is probably the best in the league. Uh, or the, not front seven, front, their linemen, their offensive line is probably the best in the league. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see those two clash and see if Castle provides anything to, you know, take the pressure off the running line. If he doesn't, I if he can't do anything like he hasn't been able to do recently, I s really feel like the Eagles could um, really shut down McFadden because they have the linebacking core to do it. Um, but then that so I, I also don't really know um, Castle really wasn't able to move the ball effectively against the uh, Seahawks but then again Richard Sherman played some of his best football so you know the Eagles secondary is more, much more porous so you've got to look at Dez potentially having an impact, but how healthy is he? That's the other thing. Uh, I think they're still limiting his snaps. and So I, I, I would be cautious there. Um, so that game just doesn't provide a lot for me, especially because I don't think DeMarco Murray or Ryan Matthews really gives you much. I mean, the Eagles are slowly coming together, but I don't know. I don't know where the Eagles are. That's going to be a game to watch just for future implications. Bears, Chargers, Star Chargers. All the charges, all the charges, except the defense, because the defense is terrible. But um, Malcolm Floyd, big game. Um, Stevie Johnson replacing Keenan Allen. He'll be in that role in the slot, so big game. Um, Danny Woodhead, 
probably going to have a 10-point game at least. Um, so he's a flex play this week for you for sure. Um, I even like Inman, um, uh, who will take the who will be the third wide receiver in the three wide receiver sets now going forward for the rest of the season. Um, and he's had some decent games. So I mean, I think Phil Rose puts up 35 passes and the Chargers do very very well. Um, and, and the Bears, I think Alshon Jeffrey could have a very good game. Cutler is very viable in this matchup. I mean, it's a matchup that we could see 35, you know, you know, 35, 31, something like that. It's it's not a low-scoring game. Um, both of these defenses struggle. Um, the Giants game and the Buccaneers game could be the same way. Both of the defenses struggle. And if the Giants move the ball like they did against the Saints, that game could be another 45-point game, you know, 45, you know, 42 kind of thing. It's just there's a lot of points out there in the, the Giants-Bucks and the Bears-Chargers matchup. So if you have players there, that's where you want to start them um, in the games where it's going to be crazy. Uh, but that's all I have for this week. A lot of teams on by. A lot of teams on by. I think six teams are on by. So, I mean, it's going to be a short week for you guys. Uh, hope everybody has a good one. And I will catch you on Tuesday, um, and we'll just kind of go over things. I'm sorry this was such a quick show. I'm sorry that it, yeah, you know, I had to get up and go. But uh, I hope that you well, you guys actually took something out of it. And if so, then it was success. And I will catch everyone later.